Uh, 321 North Harvey on behalf of Oklahoma Gas and Electric. What I'd like to do this morning is, Eric said, give you an update on where we are from a street lighting perspective. I think uh, it's something that has, uh, has all of our full attention and it's something that we're working diligently on. As Eric said, we are working in partnership. We're talking frequently, if not daily, on the issues that are uh, confronting us. What I'd like to do is just to kind of first give you a sense, one of the questions that we more often get than not is how big, when we talk about street lights, what are we talking about? System-wide, we maintain about 300,000 lights across 30,000 square miles of service area. Here in Oklahoma specifically, as you can see, it's roughly 26,700. And of and the, you add to that an additional 8,000 that uh, the city owns that OG&E maintains. Those are primarily highway lights. So I don't know if you all had a chance to talk about the extent of the damage copper theft has caused. Um, you know, this is very reminiscent of an issue that we had in 2006, uh, where we went through a very similar issue. At that particular point, Thieves were actually uh, cutting into our electric substations. They were chaining uh, their trucks to uh, underground copper ground wire to the trucks, and then the vehicle would physically pull that copper out of the ground, and they would they would drag it off. And uh, you know that created exponential problems. It just happened to also be in the middle of the summer. We would have widespread outages. You put uh, people at risk. It was, uh, but this is very akin to that. It's epidemic uh, that we've seen this, and it was epidemic then. But the epidemic has now just taken on a different face. Uh, Wichita, Kansas has seen this problem. Tulsa has seen this problem. You know, we have now experienced this problem, and um, it's incredible. And what you see is these folks will actually uh, pull onto a highway they will be in a vehicle that's marked as if it should be there. They may even have a flashing light on it. They will have individuals that will have safety vests on. And you'll have one individual that cuts uh, one end of the line, secures it to a, v a truck, and then you'll have another individual who may be 1,000 or 2,000 yards down the way, cut the line at that end, the truck takes off, there's a third individual that's actually sitting in the back of the vehicle as they're driving down the highway. They're turning a spool to spool the, the, the copper uh, as they drive. And uh, it's, that's how we get to 70,000 feet, 13 miles, more than 13 miles of, of, uh, of copper. So some of the things that we've done to help <clears throat> expedite or affect as much of these repairs as we can, as quickly as we can. We've looked across our footprint and said, look, anything that we have from an inventory perspective, we want to centralize to Oklahoma City because of the extent of this problem. We're also looking at uh, reconducting these lights as we have to come back in and make these repairs. We're transitioning from copper to aluminum. Uh, that has been helpful. It hasn't been foolproof. I will tell you where we've affected repairs with uh, aluminum. We've seen the same type of activity. They come in, they'll cut. This time, though, as they realize they don't have copper, uh, they actually will just cut it and let it fall back into the road. But yet, we're still faced with the problem of, of having to come back and affect a repair a second time. We're working to, again, get on top of it. But as we're going through this, we're also beginning the conversion to LED. Uh, we've got a couple of projects here in Oklahoma City. If you want to uh, see uh, the net result of the transition, the Adventure District is an area I would encourage you uh, to visit at night. I would also encourage you to visit uh, the Innovation District where we've also installed LEDs. We're also beginning a uh, process of installing some, some one-offs uh, across the city. Uh, the city of Bethany also has a, a significant uh, stretch through um, 
66 through Bethany, if again, to, to see the, the effect. So outside of setting aside Project 180, all this stuff, is anything being delayed because of an, of a, of an interest in replacing it with LED? I mean, is any, is any swath of lights in Oklahoma City outside of downtown not being replaced right now and just being left dark for months at a time? Mayor, the problem that uh, we have at this particular point is, and to the slide, as we, as high pressure sodium and, and those products begin to become very limited in supply, uh, we, we are going to see a bit of a delay between when we run out of the physical inventory of the existing lights today and then when we get to them to affect uh, the transition to LED. Uh, so there may be some occasion across some areas where they may be out for perhaps a little longer just because of uh, the inventory issue, when we also, when we affect this change, when we make this change out, I wish it was as simple as going out and unscrewing an, an old bulb and screwing a new one in like we do at the house. But unfortunately, the way the system is designed, our system, is uh, the existing infrastructure is at a much higher voltage than LED requires, thus the benefit of, of LED using less electricity. So we have to physically go out and re-engineer uh, these spans as we make these repairs and step that that voltage down so it can then take the LED. Can you tell us some of the benefits of converting to LED? Why? What, well, what are the I, positives. The, the, the positives. Uh, one, you're going to uh, consume less energy. Uh, those bulbs are going to have a longer lifespan, ultimately require uh, less maintenance. Uh, these lights will actually be interconnected to um, our, our mesh network, so we'll actually be able to see them, and when they do go out, uh, that reporting will be uh, real time. So you won't any longer have to have to rely on uh, a, a manual process to report that outage. We'll be able to see it, get it into a queue, and, and affect that repair. But as far as the theft of copper or aluminum, the LED will not play any role with that? No, the, the LED, you know, the, the transition to aluminum will, will help uh, minimize copper theft. The LED transition will not. It, it, just, it, it will become uh, a cleaner um, light from my perspective, um, more user-friendly from my perspective. You, you, you'll transition away from this traditional, I call it baby aspirin orange kind of light to a more uh, daylight-oriented LED. Is there a time frame that we will have transitioned away completely from copper? We anticipate that taking approximately, or a transition away from copper. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there is a hard and fast timeline. Now, not all wiring will be transitioned. Right now, we're going to focus on transitioning highway lighting from copper to aluminum when we need to. Uh, those changes. I don't know that we'll um, arbitrarily go out, but just given the cost of going out and reconducting these projects. You know, what we'll focus on now is mitigating the um, copper theft, trying to limit the ways that individuals can actually get in and, and steal the copper.